Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at fantasyfootballprofit.com. And now your hosts, Welcome Craig and Jeff. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. And today we're talking mid-season awards. We're through eight weeks. If you go to week 16, which a lot of people do for the full, full season, this is halfway. So we got four categories we thought we'd look at here and try to make our picks for awards. So let's jump into this thing here right away. Let's just start off with the, let's just start off with the top category here, Jeff. Let's start off with MVP. So I feel like in years past, we've come to this category and it's actually been pretty simple for me. I don't feel like it was that simple for me this year. I don't, I didn't necessarily feel like there was just a clear cut standout above everybody. I feel like there's arguments that can be made for a couple of people and actually, I feel like there's a lot of people that have just been solid, but no, just you wouldn't make an argument that, oh, this guy's an MVP. It's just, it's odd. It's been an odd year like that. So I'm curious where you went with this. So, yeah, I felt the same way. Yep. <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, good football being played and a lot of injuries, which kind of take away from it. Mm-hmm. And I think being consistent actually does go a long way in my mind this year. Um, and and I, I, you know, I preface this because we play a lot of different leagues. So, you know, half PPR, standard and PPR all over the board. I would say altogether, if I really had to pick a person that I, I would think is the most valuable person that you're going to put on your roster, I, I think that it's going to be Elvin Kamara. I, I pick him. Not only has he been really good and, uh, you know, he, I think Delvin Cook just overtook him as far as points go in standard, but the guy is on pace to break uh the receiving you know receptions record for a a running back this year so far i mean he's catching an insane amount of balls and a lot of that is because of the decline of of that offense or whatever it may be but doesn't really matter to me i mean the guy is just killing it and um yeah so what was it uh via roto world um you can see it there but evan kamara is on pace to uh for 125.7 receptions that would be the single season record to a running back uh, Christian McCaffrey held it before with 116 grabs. So he would beat it by quite a bit. Uh, I mean, that goes a long way. I don't think that's going to slow down. And he's been very consistent, even though I think mm-hmm. Delvin Cook has been a little more explosive and had, I mean, that last game obviously, you know, is still weighing in our mind, but that is why I would lean towards Elvin. And I, I think it's easier to find a, a QB. So I didn't pick one of those, even though you can make a, a great case for a couple of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, yeah, I guess that's where I land. I would, I would go Elvin Kamara. He's been really solid. I mean, in PPR especially, those numbers are really stand out. All those catches. I mean, he's he's been good. I and mean, especially at the running back position right now. I mean, who? what are the players? I mean, Dalvin Cook was injured for a few. So the only one at running back who you'd even go to, it would be Alvin Kamara or it would be what, Derrick Henry? And that's mm-hmm. the only two guys that have been consistent. But even like Derrick Henry hasn't been – he said Derrick Henry's had like two really good games and then the rest have been average. Kamara has just been even, he's been slightly elevated better than that. And yeah, it's almost quiet in a way. Don't you feel like it's, it's not like um, it's, it's not the same as like we, you heard from McCaffrey last year or different players years past. It's more, it's a quieter, um, you know, steady pace this year, but it's been really, really good. But in a year where, you know, the, the, the number <laughs> or the, these top standouts aren't as clear cut. I think, yeah, it's a good, it's a good pick. There really isn't that many other options. I would say Alvin Kamara is probably I mean, Tim. I, I would say I didn't have a wide receiver option uh, in my mind. I, I didn't either. I, I didn't even go there really. Oh. I thought it had to have been one of the, you know, I really, it was between him and Delvin cook a little bit. And then and cooks I, injury. I believe, yeah. Yeah. And, and really even that, I mean, what he missed one game. He only missed one game. Yeah. He's been really solid. But, yeah, he's been incredibly good, but I really had to factor in, even though he mm-hmm. looks better, I had to factor in the amount, just the sheer amount of, of pass catching and other mm-hmm. things that Kamara has to do that Delvin hasn't been doing. Um, yeah, so if I did have to pick a guy, I, I would pick him, even though I think, you know, I mean, like I said. It, it's not as clear cut this year. It really isn't. No. So I actually, I'm going to go with a quarterback because it's not clear cut and I don't know where else to go. So Kamara would have been my other option. He was the top position player for me by far and my other option there's actually I feel like they're at quarterback I would say to me there's two options but I'm gonna go with Russell Wilson and I think he's yeah yeah he was QB two through eight weeks but that's only through seven weeks 
through seven weeks he was QB2 only because of he had a bye. He will now be QB1. Um, and it's just been so consistently good. And it's just the fact, too, that Russell Wilson gets slightly underrated every year in the draft. And we, I mean, how many times have we had this Russell Wilson conversation every year that people are kind of overlooking him? And it happens every year. And it's always like, oh, Seattle runs the ball. They're not going to get enough passes for Russell Wilson. Yeah, that's changed. Look, look, look at he's done now. That's that's not the you can't use that argument anymore. So Russell Wilson, let me pull up some numbers here. He has had only this is in six point touchdown leagues. He's only had one game below 30 points. That's it. One game below 30 points in six point touchdown leagues. And that was a 24.9 game where he threw for 360 yards. But oh, yeah, he only threw two touchdowns. The one game he only threw two touchdowns. So this is Russell Wilson's touchdowns on the year. He went four, five, five, two, three, three, four. You're just getting a consistently good player. And you know, it's not going to stop because his schedule for the rest of the season is really good. I mean, he plays Buffalo this week. That's the toughest game he has left. He has Buffalo, the Rams, Arizona, Eagles, Giants, Jets, Washington, Rams. That's not scary at all. I mean, this is it's gonna continue. And so Russell Wilson, I don't usually go quarterback, but it's been a, it's an odd year. There hasn't been that, you know, unless it's Alvin Kamara, there really is another option. So Russell Wilson for me, Kyler, Kyler Murray is solid too, but he's just not quite, he's been good, but he's not Russell Wilson level. I'll say. No, Russell, I agree. Russell's I mean, just special. Yeah. And if you look at the, the average as well, I mean, and this isn't standard once again, but his average is just under 37 points per game. That's crazy. Which is mind blowing. And he's over five points over the next QB, which would be, be Mahomes at this point. I mean, it really is quite the quite the large jump. And when you said that, I mean, your worst game is 24 and a half, and that's against Miami because you probably – I mean, like – Yeah, right. Yeah, give me a break. All right. How about least valuable? Where, where'd you go with this one? I mean, first of all, there's a lot of different guys I can name off on this one. Mm-hmm. I tried – once again, I'm not going to factor in injury too much. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried about injury because, yeah, there's a lot of guys you could throw there, but that's, that's yeah, unfair. I, I think – the person that I'm going to go for this one, uh, I'm going to go with Juju. So Juju was still relatively high in the rankings. Uh, he had you know Ben Roethlisberger back. He should have been the number one guy there. They're doing really well. Um, we've seen other guys on his team have moments of just being unbelievably good. Uh, he he had all the possibility in the world and. I mean, right now, where is he? He's sticking around uh, wide receiver 40. He hasn't had – he had two games or in double digits when he's, you know, three touchdowns, and all of those came in the first three weeks. I, I just think that he is probably the the biggest letdown for having the best situation uh, to come to. So I, I put him there. Yeah, Juju would have – he was one of – he was on my short list. I'll say there's a couple other guys, but Juju was definitely there. Um You know, people, well, some people could, you could even throw Lamar Jackson out there, honestly, if you wanted to, depending on where you drafted him. Um, I'm not going to maybe go for it because he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't, but it, 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 it's, you could go with it, maybe it's possible. You could make an argument for it without a doubt. But (laughs) but Juju, for sure. Juju's been, he hasn't been good. He's had one game where he had a lot of targets, and that was last week, and he's just not been very good. Week one, I think he did well, but yeah, that's a good, that's a good pick. But, you know, I'm going to go with, um, ah, this is a tough one for me. I think I'm going to pick Mike McCarthy. <laughs> so. I feel like this was a setup category, <laughs> just so you could say that Mike yeah, McCarthy. Mike McCarthy is a moron. So, yeah, I think I'm going to go with Mike McCarthy. I don't like the guy. I mean, he uh, built an offense around Dak, which was great. It was playing. The offense was playing well. I mean, they were way behind, but he's a moron because he hasn't done anything since then. But you no, know, in reality. I mean, it's still, you know, this feels like maybe it's recency bias, but I think I'm going to go Zeke. I'm really, this is hard to say for a guy that's kind of a top 10 back. It's very, there's a lot of recency bias in this. I get this, but there's three games in a row that have just been bad in standard scoring. These last three games, four, 5.1, 7.3. And you're doing this from a guy who was drafted probably what third in every draft this year behind McCaffrey in Saquon. Which God, that just shows. Man, we used to have good players in the league: McCaffrey, Saquon. You know, we get to, you know, we yeah, had a lot of options. Yeah, yeah, piling up. Yeah, but Zeke. I mean, yeah. So you're getting this from the number three pick, and yeah, he started the year fine, but he hasn't had a hundred yard game on the year. I'll say that there hasn't even been a hundred yard game. 
and these last three games have just been so bad. And it's against, this is the thing that gets me. It's against Arizona, Washington, and Philadelphia. This isn't some group that should be doing this to you, you know? And actually all year long, his schedule hasn't been that tough for him to be where he's at. Rams, Atlanta, Seattle, Cleveland, Giants, Arizona, Washington, Philly. It hasn't been great. And now you get Pittsburgh in week nine. Oh, lovely. That's going to go well. <laughs> like, what's that going to do? I mean, it's terrible. I mean, so I'm just going to, I'm going to go with that one. And it's, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a three week award really for Zeke, but I don't know. I'm just, I, I've just been disappointed. Maybe this is me being a Zeke owner and just not loving what I'm seeing. Um, to me, it's Zeke, I, Joe Mixon could have been an option, but then he gets hurt for a week, you know, a couple of weeks. It's hard to throw him in there, but to me, it's Zeke. I got to go with him. Okay. Yeah. I think, if I was going to go a running back, I'd probably go Drake, but we kind of saw that one coming. Yeah. So it's hard, yeah. but I, I I get what you're saying. And you prefaced it by saying, I know, you know, it's more of what happened recently. Yeah. It's hard because you're right. I mean, he's still ranked in the top 10. His first five games were really good. Yeah. But and it's I, just, I don't know if he's going to be back on track too. So I think, you're, well, you know, it might be a little bit of a premonition of what's to come. Well, and now Zeke owner, you get Pittsburgh, then you get a buy. You're not going to get anything out of Zeke till maybe week 11. So you're going to go from week, week six through 10 with nothing from Zeke. And that's disappointing. That's, you know, <laughs> five weeks of nothing. I mean, think about how many running backs went down though. I mean, you said it though, right? So you have yeah. Saquon that goes down. You have yep. McCaffrey that goes down. Um, I mean, you have Aaron Jones that goes down. You have I mean, Nick Cook, Chubb that goes down. Well, I mean, and then the guys who missed time, Cook missed time, uh, missed a game. Jones has missed what two games? Aaron Jones missed two games. Like it's just Mixon's missed. Uh, yeah, Mixon. Um, games. and Clyde Edwards Alaire, who was up there, Edwards Alaire was one of these guys during the top, and now he has another back that's taking carries from him. Yeah, Miles Sanders. Miles I mean, Sanders. It's been it's all over the board right now of people. Chris Carson, if you want, you know, go down a little more. Yeah, you know. It's um, it's a lot of guys actually that have been getting hurt. Yeah, this one. Uh, what are the other categories? But oh yeah, I'll I'll bring them up at the end if if we don't bring them up. Right. What are the, what's the next category? So next next up, we got breakout breakout player of the year. So okay. who are you going with here? Um, well, this was a, a tough one because we also had a uh, best waiver pickup, and I true, didn't want to make true. I didn't want to make those the same thing. So yeah. I I differentiated them. So re- keep that in mind. We might maybe we'll cross over, but. Right now, I know that it's been very up and down, but I think the breakout um, for me would be Chase Claypool because I think he, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about even putting Justin Jefferson up there, but I was kind of preaching him and, and Claypool was a little more of the out of the blue. He could have been a waiver pickup as well. He's been up and down, but I think showing what he is able to do, he's going to be on everyone's radar. And even though his his year, you know, might not be uh, – like uh, a league winner for you because you're kind of uncertain of how he's going to end. I think that uh, to be that true breakout, you just show everyone how talented you are and now you're going to be a name. And I think that's exactly what he did this year. It was through, uh, through seven weeks. I think he was what wide receiver 12 or so, somewhere around there in standard. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even right now, I mean, he's a, uh, yeah, well, he's wide receiver 13 before, I think before you actually factor in uh, this, uh, okay. this past week. Yep. But he's really only – he's had two really bad games. But other, he's gone into double digits three times and, um, what, four, five, six, seven touchdowns on the year already? I mean, it, and they, you know, they've rushed with him. They've thrown it deep. Uh, I, I don't know. The sky's the limit as long as this guy stays healthy and, and continues to get better because uh, it, he's one of the reasons why I think Juju has been so disappointing because if he can do that, why, why couldn't Juju? Yep. So I had a hard time on figuring out where I wanted to go with this category. You know, I was trying to think, do I pick like a, you know, like a Claypool, there's a Justin Jefferson, there's, you know, players like that. Right. And I just, I'm just trying to figure out how do, how do I want to approach this? And I decided screw it. I'm just going to pick because I want to put a name out there that I love. And I'm just going to talk about DK Metcalf again. So. (laughs) No, how can you argue that? I mean, I don't care how much we've talked about him. Yep. Yeah, you know, it's just I think you know because he is a you know he's a he's broken out now where he was good last year right and we saw the potential, but he has now become just an elite wide receiver. I mean, you think it, it, that's it? He's become an elite. He's a top five wide receiver in the NFL, I believe. 
truly at this point. He's the number one fantasy wide receiver at this moment. Yeah, and he yeah, and he is just in general. I mean, out of actual NFL receivers, what do you got? We talked about this before. We got Devontae Adams, you got DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, Michael Thomas should be there coming back, you would think. I almost um, wanted to put him as disappointing player right. or whatever it was, yeah. like late, but, least valuable, but right. But you know, he should be there. I mean, Tyree Kill is up there, but I think I would, would have to, I think you have to put him up there. But I mean, then it's top five every guy. He's a little more up and down, but still. but then it's then it's DK Metcalf, right? I mean, I think he's there. I think he's right there in that top five with these well, guys. Well, here's the crazy part too, because is he the like if he goes in that top five, does that mean it's Julio falling out of it now? I mean, is that who's falling out of it? I think he's the new Julio. So I think he yeah. is. I mean, you know, not to be overly I think he's that type of player. I, I'm not I think he's that guy. I know it seems like I think he's just that good. And we're gonna be talking about DK Metcalf for the next few years as just he's gonna be one of these top guys, borderline, not maybe first round pick, but in some in some drafts he could go first round, but early, early second round pick, you know, next year. I mean, without a doubt, next year he's gonna be a second round pick in drafts. I mean, there's no doubt about it. So yeah, he's he's just he's been awesome. And um, it's you know, there's been some up and down to it, right? There's been a couple games that aren't quite there, but you see it how good he is. And okay. It's just the, it's totally. a, it's those he's had one and when I say he's the number one fantasy wide receiver, I do want to say that is standard. That is not yeah, that yeah. PPR. He's probably a few down af, if in that one, but um, he's only had one bad game. I mean, he, against Arizona in Week Seven, he had two for twenty three, well, no touchdowns. And that that's was where, it. And everything mm-hmm. went to lock, even in that game. So in that game, he almost got that game winning touchdown in overtime too. That they got called back for a hold. Yeah, so he was true. very close to making that a, making that a game there. This is how so. how good he has been, and with not a lot of catches really, because uh, besides for the last game where he caught twelve and he just went bananas or whatever, yep. he he had uh, the second most is six catches, and then everything else has been four, and. Mm-hmm the lowest amount of yards he has received besides for that week seven, when we throw out is 92. Yeah. I mean, unbelievable. He's an unbelievable deep threat. You're on an offense that definitely uh, uses him correctly. I mean, and even when Lockett does go off, mm-hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean that, I mean, that one game, that one week he did, but it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, he's not going to be looked at. So he a, can get you points in one catch, which is unbelievable. It's kind of like a, a large, you know I mean? Like a mix between like, I don't, I'm yeah. not even going to make those assumptions, but you know where I'm going with it. Um, it's, uh, I mean, he's basically Julio Jones and Calvin Johnson in one. It's that good. I mean, I mean, I'm not going to go there, but no. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, it's like the, it's the perfect situation too. You got a guy that has that size, that speed, and he plays with the, one of the best deep ball throwing quarterbacks we've ever seen. It's just, exactly. the, it's just an awesome combination. It is, I mean, I swear sometimes you could just have three, you have three downs. Just throw the ball to DK on a you know a deep route three times, and he's going to catch one of them every time, right? So, oh. next up, final category. This will be the final one of the night. Waiver wire, best waiver wire pickup of the year. So there is a couple. You talked about Chase Claypool could have been one, um, but who would you go with here? I, I have one, and this one is a bullet in my like in my mind. Like this one would be number one, um, and I I feel bad because we didn't I didn't stress. To pick him up, I did not think that he was going to do this well. I take this one as the big L on on this season. I know. Myself. I already know where you're going. I'm. Really it's James Robinson. Yeah. The guy has been just showing out, and I feel dumb every time he does it. Now uh, it just no good for him. He's been unbelievable, and if you picked him up, you look like a genius. Well, and he can be in your starting lineup every week, and you got him off the waivers. It's yeah. You know, we we talked about it slightly before we did, you know but we for, did but we didn't effing emphasize it enough and we didn't do it ourselves because i didn't pick him up you didn't pick him up no and he just sat there on our waiver wire and we should have seen it because when leonard fournette was released there was the talk if you saw some of the things one of the reasons why people said he was getting released was because of james robinson it said we got you know what happened at the time though we had um What's his name? A Zigbo there, and you have mm-hmm. what? I can't remember the other. Why can't I remember? Um, Chris Robin or uh, Thompson, but there was um, yeah, Chris Thompson. Yeah. Raquel Arm was it? Raquel Armstead, who, yeah, who has him too. who has um, you know, out for the year with COVID at this point, so he's had some complications with that. So at the time, there was two or three other backs there that we thought were maybe ahead of Robinson. If not, was it going to be a split? And then obviously Armstead gets COVID, a Zigbo gets hurt. And it opened the door up for Robinson, and he's just—I mean, what through week seven? What was he RB four? Standard, 
four. Wow, that's insane. And yeah. he would he would make my team a lot better right now if I had him. And I'm disappointed I don't. I do have him in some leagues, but not not enough. I should have had him in every league. One of us should have had him in every league we were in. Yeah. It just should have been. Um, yeah, there, there's no other option. It's James Robinson. He's the top. There's some good waiver wire pickups, but no one, no one like this. You know, like we said, Justin Jefferson, Chase Claypool were solid options. Um yeah, and, and when we but, talk about breakout yeah. too, I was like, okay, he, he would have probably been there, but I wanted to yep. switch it up a little bit. Yep, yep. And it's just, yeah, it's that good of a pickup. It's really worked out. I mean, again, I don't this is this is the thing though. I don't like I keep saying this. I don't necessarily think this is a special player, but he's getting it done, which is still surprising me because it's on a bad team with not a great offense, but he just gets it done. And I don't even know how it happens, honestly. It just doesn't feel like a situation that should work out that well but it, it seems to. So, but all right, that's all I got then for the mid season awards. Oh, hopefully I'm still disappointed about that Robinson one. He would really make my team a little better right now, but all right, that'll do it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with a mailbag. So get your questions into us on Instagram.com slash fantasy football profit, or if you go to YouTube, youtube.com slash fantasy football profit. If you're listening there and uh, comment on this, this episode, and we'll get you your questions answered on the mailbag show. Talk to you guys then.